Hi right, guys, Mark here, Celtic Crossbows. Tonight we've got, we're going to be looking again at pistol crossbows. They're my favourite. All the way from the EK Cobra uh, Stinger Mark 1 with a sock extension, right up the latest Stevo Stinger 2 V2. It's just going to be a quick look over some things you can do to improve your system if you're just new, get into it with the cheap $30 Cobra or up to an £800 Steamboat. So we'll look first at the Cobra. Come with a 55 pound prod, although it says 80 pound on a box, ignore that. On the handle, there's a ball on the end. When you try to upgrade to a bigger limb, you find it won't fit, it's designed that way. What you need to do, get yourself over to the 3D cabin on eBay and get yourself a stock extension. Um, quite a, a bit of fiddling and farting to get the fitness and remodeling, but it will go and it works excellent. The prod, as you can see here, I filed it out inside. This has been filed out to take the Steamboat Stinger 1 80 pound limb, so it's a genuine 80 pound limb, and it transforms the performance of the Cobra. It makes it a really useful little pistol crossbow. Um, it takes it away from being a standard, step back, pistol crossbow into a nice little carbine. Also, I supply these little buffers over, over on my eBay channel which will protect your bowstring from hitting against the, the bare metal and makes them last a bit longer by displacing the load. All right, next step, trigger. In sideways play, you can see look, lateral play in the trigger. You can stop this easily by using two um, M4 uh, washers or shims and push them down either side of the trigger blade and push the pin through when you do that, it'll reduce the drag uh, slack in your trigger, giving you a much crisper release. Next one along the line, we've got to be looking at the Mankung Alligator OP360 Bay Desire XL. The first thing you need to do as soon as you buy it, fit one of these. These are one of Danny's 3D triggers from. Um, 3dcults.com they are excellent um, I'll leave the links below in the description for you to go over to print print them off yourself or I sell myself on eBay as well and I'll put the links on the bottom for these but these are excellent triggers from Danny how if I put it the right way up as you can see how it goes da -da 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 -da. fits that way around with the gear in the ratcheting system, fit and such, down into the trigger. Totally transforms the bow and it reduces the, power, the pull on the trigger by roughly half. So if you've got a, uh, a 30 pound pull on the trigger, it'll drop it to 15, etc. Okay, next upgrade. So once you've fitted your upgraded trigger, do your, your limb riser modification. It'll make your life a lot easier. For those of you who've, who've first had these out of the box and struggled and farted trying to string it without a stringer, you know what a, a pain in the backside these can be. So do yourself the mod, cut out your front, cut your front off, and again from Danny from 3D Celts, fit yourself the quick change bowling system. Just fits straight in. I haven't fish modify this one yet, but it fits just straight in and um it makes changing your string and restringing your bowstring a lot easier. If you're out on the range, your string starts to free, I mean, just whip one bowling out, second one in. That's uh, an essential upgrade. Uh, third upgrade, um, you'll see footage of my back videos further back. I would say to fit the Steamboat stock. Um, it's a cheap way to get into the Steamboat territory uh, if you can't fork out in one go for a Steamboat. Okay, the next one, for, this is for generally all crossbow users, not just pistol crossbow users, especially recurve users. If you look at the angle of the string, compared to the angle of the riser, it's down below. So when it pulls down the limb, it gives you drag and friction. The more drag you've got, the more friction you've got, the more power you lose from returning on the bowstring. Don't use the cheapest limb you can get. Um, it doesn't work. Trust me, I've tried it. I've, got, I've used, i put thousands of shots through these and um, done loads of testing. 
for the string itself, get yourself a really nice thick um, uh, wax for the string to protect the fibres. Um, from OMP, I use um, Black Art. It's a real thick, heavy duty um, grease that goes on the string um, and really reduces the friction of the material in the string. As it's dragging down the rail, it causes heat, causes friction and you lose power, but at the same time you burn your strings. That's the, generally the cause why of them snapping. All the friction around the breech area. Now, also what I'd use is then, on the rail itself, use some, I guess, um, this is, given get in camera, String Love. Um, great product. For those of you who haven't tried it, get hold of some. Um, it's a lubricant. Although they call, call this stuff rail lube it's not it's for those of you who haven't tried it if you try rubbing your finger across the surface put some of this on it on a plate and run your push finger across it it causes friction stick some of this on top of it transform it your bowstring will fly down the rail like never before you can also use this on your trigger blade on the pivot as will transform, transform the trigger and on your cocking arms as well and um, it makes a great difference i'll just show you now Right, so assuming you you wax your string, you've got it nice and worked in, just take your rail of, or lube, a proper lube, and you literally just put a spot on each side of the rail and run your finger down the rail, work it in. Down in the sear itself then, just put a drop either side of your sear and your geared riser, because it's got the um, custom tuning trigger, Again, it transforms the trigger, makes it a lot sweeter and a lot lighter to use. So it's something important, take important as well, in the life of your bowstring, so they're expensive. Um, make sure they're well lubed, and all your, your equipment, your pivots and the grip and everything is well lubed. All your contact points and surfaces are lubed. The more lubrication you've got, the longer your bow will last, and the less friction and strain on the material. On the early ones, the cocking arms you are known to break if they overstress. Um, hopefully, um, I got a £120 Magnum bow in my steam bow, and I should see a long time. Right, next upgrade on these, I recommend, if you look on the cocking arms here, I got them um, buffers. Again, as same as I fitted to my Mark 1, which I made myself, um, you can actually get these now over on the likes of uh, eBay. I'm using for metal rod caps, um, they're only a couple of pence, about uh, two pounds a set. And again, it goes on the end of your cocking arms, it protects your bowstring, um, and protects uh, the life of everything else in the, the, the power stroke cycle. The last tips of the day on this video is long range bolts. Everybody knows that all the pistol magazines, you use your short range bolts. These are notoriously unstable in flight over 30, 35 yards. What you need instead are long range bolts. Just because you've got the magazine on your crossbow, it doesn't mean you can't use long range bolts. All you do instead, when she's cocked, drop your bolt down the front and fire it as normal. Just don't forget you haven't got a second shot. Um, I'll show you now better on the OP360. So considering it's basically the same chassis, or similar, very similar chassis, one of the bolts sits in the, the rail, it sits at the back as normal, just flush of the riser, so you can still use your long range bolts as normal, and these are much more stable and better in long range flight than your standard short bolts for the magazine. So for those of you thinking, um, seen a certain video lately that the pistol crossbows don't group as well as um, a full size crossbow. That's bullshit if you're using the right bolt. is horses for courses. Um, so if you use the right bolt, I got my um, 220 grain um, tungsten tip hornets, um, long range broadhead, um, long range bodkin, and of course, all you guys know, I got my 300 grain um, badger bolts as well, which are back in stock in December. 
The next step as well, which is a nice little trick, if you're not using a magazine, you can't use these bolts with a magazine. I'm not using a magazine, because you can't use these bolts with a magazine. These are my 7.6mm, uh, 450 grain, um, 10 inch bolts. Um, I do supply with a flat knock. These are actually for a R9 that I made these ones for, but they do fit, they do work. I run with a flat knock and the string catches at the back. You can see here now the difference with this bolt. She's slightly proud at the front. So if you're having the customised um, rise at the front, you've got to shave off about two millimetres off the front of your block at the front. So the bolt sits nice, true and level. So there you are, you can use the, the bigger 7.6 millimetre bolts with your Cobra um, OP360 Mankung Alligator, as long as you're not using a magazine. Also works well with the Steambow uh, Survival or Stinger Survival Crossbow or Hunter Crossbow, the new one, the new single shot. Works ex extremely well with that. And we have that on in a couple of weeks time to show you, we'll be out testing that as well. These universal mounts they sell on eBay for 11 mil and uh, 20 mil uh, air rifle and Picatinny rails. These ones. Okay. They don't work. If you've got a standard Picatinny rail, if you look here, you've got the standard air, air rifle mounts inside. When you fit it onto your 20 millimeter rail, these stop you from locking down in. You've got the, the two bolts there, show it on camera, you've got these two bolts here. They don't line up with a Picatinny mount. So when you try to lock it in, you can't drop it down far enough over the rail to tighten it up. You will get a little nibble on it, but you give it a tap and boom, it falls off. Um, so when they say that um, they're a universal mount, um, I would love to see the universal mount. They go on because they will not fit my, my Steamboat Alligator or my OP360 or my um, Steamboat Stinger 2 uh, anyway at all. Okay, next time we're going to be looking to fit in the scope rail on the metal magazine and flight types where bolts work and what bolts don't. But until then, thanks and bye bye.